like a frightened turtle. <laughs> If you're not familiar with that clip, I'll link it in the description. I think it's a funny one. Uh, today we're going to talk about shrinkage. Uh, and we're going to talk about feeders and how the two go together. We use feeders to help control the shrinkage in our parts. Now, all alloys shrink, right? Anything we're going to cast here in the garage especially is going to shrink. Whether it be some aluminum alloy, or something like this. This is aluminum bronze. This is the worst. This stuff shrinks. You talk about a fried turtle. This stuff shrinks like mad. If you're going to cast aluminum bronze, you're going to end up needing feeders. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, unless you're going to cast something really, really tiny um, or really flat, thin and flat. Other than that, you're going to need a feeder on it. It's just, it shrinks so bad. Uh, we're going to do four experiments today. We're going to use this part, this pattern, in all four, and occasionally with three of them, I think, we're going to use this feeder as well. Uh, and we're going to position the feeder in different places around the part, and we're going to look at how the shrink behaves. Now, I've already done them, and I can tell you there's some surprising results at the end. So uh, let's talk about gates, or, well, gates and feeders together, I guess, really. Essentially, your feeder has to be big enough to stay fluid long enough to, to supply the part with fluid metal as the, metal, as the part is shrinking. So kind of what that, what that means is you need to think in terms of being big enough, not tiny. Uh, if you're going to feed a big part, you're going to need a pretty big feeder to do that because you don't want the feeder to freeze up. If you're going to connect your feeder through a gate, uh, you need to use a pretty big gate so that the gate doesn't freeze up uh, along the way. Because if your gate freezes and you're trying to feed through a frozen gate, guess what, guys? It ain't going to get there, right? The metal is going to be stuck in the feeder. So, um, you know, good rule of thumb: put your if you're going to do it through a, if you're going through it through a gate, put it on the input side of your part, um, put it close to the part, put a big gate next from the feeder to the part. Better yet, if you can put the feeder directly on the part, score, right? When I did the very first video in the, the introduction, uh, I used this as a feeder and I put it right on the part where the shrinkage occurred, fixed the shrinkage, right? By doing that. And this was probably overkill, but that's okay. So that's something else to think about uh, is you want your, you don't want your feeder to be sucking metal out of your part either, <laughs> right? If your feeder is, is close, but it's too small, as it freezes, what's going to happen? It's going to start to shrink. As it starts to shrink, it's going to start looking for metal to fill it. Where's it going to get it from? It's going to get it from the big part. So the, you're going to, your feeder is actually going to suck metal from your part. So uh, we're going to show four different ways as I do this. We're going to, uh, really quick, we're going to just show the layout. We're going to show the pour, and we're going to show me opening the mold for some reason. And uh, then we're going to come back and look at all four castings on the table. So let's go ahead and get started with them. All right, this is going to be the kind of standard for all of the molds. Uh, I've got the uh, runner and spin trap down into the drag. Everything else will be placed up in the cove when I make mold these. And this is going to be our control uh, pour for everything, right? This is going to be the, the pour that we do without a feeder. So everything else will kind of be measured against this. Uh, they all have the same size gate coming in. Sometimes it's a little bit longer, but it's the same cross-sectional area. I realized I had it in there backwards. So now we turn it around, get it all uh, uh, parted out, and uh, get the sprue in. And we'll get it poured. I want you to pay close attention to this uh, vent up in the front of the mold and see where the metal comes when we pour it. You see it right there, it just popped up. And there it is again. You can kind of see it's kind of leveled. Uh, metal makes it all the way to the top of the mold. All right, and with all these, I'm going to show you me opening the mold, and you see in the back side of the part. There you go. Back side of the part. <laughs> all right, this is the second pour. In this pour, we're going to put the feeder 
on the gate very close to the part. And you can watch the uh, vent here. You can also see right down straight into the feeder, which is kind of a cool view. You can see the metal entering the feeder and the nice non-turbulent flow to the top. And second pour, here's the opening of the mold. And there it is again, <laughs> the backside of the part. I'll show you all these parts here at the end. We'll show them all laid out together. All right, we third one. This is going to be what I hope, what I expect to be the worst pour in terms of shrinkage. Uh, we're going to put the feeder at the far end of the of the pattern, so it's on the output side. It's on the coldest side. Uh, it's got to, the metal will have to traverse uh, a gate that's fairly thin and a part that's very thin before ever reaching the uh, the part of the mold that uh, that needs it. So. My expectation here is that the feeder will do virtually nothing for this part because the metal will have frozen before it gets there. So there's we're going to put it at the very back side of this uh, mold. And here we go. You, you'll be able to see again the metal coming up uh, into the feeder. And again, pay attention to what happens at the vent or what doesn't happen at the vent. No metal visible in the vents. And part three here is the backside of the part. And this will be our last pour. With this one, it's going to be very simple. We're just going to put the, uh, the gate in, and the feeder will go right on top of the part, just like that. This one should produce the least amount of shrinkage, uh, if none. Uh, maybe there would be no shrinkage on this part. And again, you can take a look at the vent. Um, you're not going to see anything happen there, but we'll watch the uh, feeder, see the metal flow up through the feeder nicely, again, nice and smooth. And there's a little bit of shrink there, a little bit of shrinkage on the top of the feeder, which is fine. That's what you want to see. Oh, come on, get it open. And there's the fourth backside of them. <laughs> All right, here they are all laid out again. The first one, uh, no feeder, uh, vent all the way to the top. Second one, uh, we have a feeder close in. Third one, the feeder is very far away. Fourth one, the feeder right on top of the part. Uh, and I'm going to, you can see here there's some shrinkage showing up, but um, uh, not a lot. We're going to get, we're going to cut these apart and look at them here in just a second. All right, so here we go. Uh, first pour, second pour, third pour, fourth pour. First one was when I poured it just like that with no feeder at all. Second one, I poured it with the feeder very close to the part. Third one, I poured with the feeder out here past the end of the part. And then the fourth one, I poured with the feeder right on top of the part. So uh, we got exactly what we expected to see, right? This guy shrunk. It's all deformed. Um, you can't. Don't judge by this guy. <laughs> I knocked that thing over in the, what is in the mold. But all the surface here is, is all deformed. Second one, uh, again, pouring very close to the part. Uh, good shape. It looks like it poured all, it filled all the way. Uh, looks like the feeder actually worked, which was a surprise to me because I didn't expect it to feed through this little bitty section right here. Uh, but it did. So, uh, pretty amazing to me. They bring him. This guy, um, it doesn't feel too bad. I don't feel a lot of weird shape in here, uh, but I, I expected more. I expected this to be this be worse. And this guy is exactly what I expected, right? If I had done a good witness line on this on this feeder part here, I would have got a good cutoff, and uh, it would have been perfect. This is, so this is, this is the way to go, uh, but I didn't do a good witness line. Now, what is interesting to me are these two guys. You'll notice, first of all, that this, this vent went all the way to the top. Let me bring it back into this where you can see things. Uh, you'll notice that this guy uh, goes all the way to the top, this vent, and that's because as I'm filling the part uh, with the, uh, the runner, 
and this and the gate. All it has to do is supply enough metal to fill this piece, right? Fills that piece, and it comes up pretty quickly through the through the vent out, and it came to the right to the surface of the mold, as it did over on the uh, spin trap. Now these guys, this is what's interesting. You notice these vents are much much shorter, right? If I were to show you, you can see the difference here. So why did that happen? As I'm laying in bed the other night thinking about it, I thought, I think it has to do with the speed at which the part was filling. Because when we're filling this part, all we're doing is filling this part. When we're filling these other part, these two parts, we're filling a second volume, right? I put it behind here. We're filling the second volume in addition to this. So now that feeder that I'm, and that gate that I'm using are feeding twice as much volume, at least twice as much volume, uh, with the same amount of uh, volumetric flow coming through. So what's gonna happen is these parts are going to fill at half the speed, I guess, you know, call it half the speed. As it's coming up, it is chilling against the sides of the mold. That means that this stuff that we call sand <laughs> is cooling the metal down. And that metal is starting to take the shape, is starting to solidify, is starting to take the shape of our mold. It's starting to look just like that guy. Now, as it's coming up through the vent, because it's moving so much slower and it's chilling, it freezes in the vent. It doesn't make it all the way to the top because, you know, it doesn't have enough speed. It's not moving quick enough to keep that thing moving before it throws it off. So I think what's happened here is there is probably shrinkage inside this part. I think that what we're seeing here is an artifact of chilling against the surface. This one, even more so, because when I, when I showed you the line, when I show you this line, this, I took a camera shot right across the front here, and you can see with the yellow line where the height is. These two are higher than these two. These two exhibited, it's just as I would expect, exhibited the most amount of shrinkage. This one though, even though it shrank quite a bit, it still maintained the shape. And I think that goes back to this slow filling, that sand to the side of the mold, chilling the metal, the metal take, solidifying with the shape of the mold. But because it's still shrinking, it comes down and it shrinks down in here, because there's nothing to be able to feed it. Here, I had enough heat from this guy coming through the sand to probably keep the sand warmer. And I was close enough that it may have fed for a while. When I had this part this far apart, um, it didn't get a chance to feed it. So that to me is the most interesting thing that I found. These guys ex it behaved exactly as I expected. This one I didn't expect to get to do as well as it did. And this one again, exactly like I would expect. All right, so there you go, long video. Um, sorry, I, I, I hope to keep all the, I think I may hit my 10 minute goal once <laughs> in all these videos. Anyway, uh, I hope you learned something about, about feeders today. Um, you notice I didn't use the R word um, because I call them feeders, because that's what they do. They feed the part. Let's see, what else can I tell you? Uh, that's it for the series. Uh, if you have watched, if you haven't watched the rest of the series and you want to, to check out the other videos in this series, uh, I'll put a link to the playlist like right over there. If for some odd reason you decide you want to subscribe to my channel, I'll put a link right there. <laughs> but most of all, you guys, I hope you learned something and I hope you have a great day.